His experience is searingly fresh, and Joshua Boyle is trying to harbor his young family at his parents' home while answering some of the difficult questions about their five years as captives. He told us he went to Afghanistan as a pilgrim to try and help people. Why did you go there? Try to fix things. In the beginning, his kidnappers just wanted money, he said, believing the U.S. government would pay quickly, especially because his American wife, Caitlin, was pregnant. The very first time that they came in to interrogate me and they said, who do we contact that will pay for you? Tell us who you work for. Tell us, are you ICRC? And they will give us money and you go home. Are you Army? Tell us they'll give us money and you'll go home. Tell us who you work for. And I said, I have bad news for you. Because the first is that I only work for God, and God does not have a briefcase of cash to give you. Later, the captors used his family as political leverage, making demands, moving them 23 times between huts, dungeons, and abandoned houses on both sides of the Afghan-Pakistan border. And as he revealed on Friday, exacting their brutal will. The stupidity and evil of authorizing the murder of my infant daughter, Martyr Boyle, and the stupidity and evil of the subsequent rape of my wife. Today, Boyle strongly rejected any Taliban claims that his wife naturally miscarried. Anybody who reads their actual report with a critical eye would agree that it is essentially a confession. They have not tried to make a plausible excuse. They have not tried to put forward a plausible defense. Over the five years, there were several hints of freedom, negotiations, but they always fell through. Until last week, during the handover, the family being transferred in the trunk of their captor's car, it turned violent. We were listening at all of the shouting and the shooting, trying to recognize voices, who's dead, who's not, who's run away. Inside the trunk. We're still inside. And one of our major concerns was that we couldn't actually see our two sons at this point. The chaos had broken loose when they were screaming, kill the bandies, kill the prisoners, kill the prisoners. The one who wanted to do that was grabbing at the children to pull them outside and kill them and that. We were frantically trying to figure out, like, can you hear anything from inside the car? Can you hear the boys? Because at this point, like, there have been bullets going through the glass, bullets going through the metal. I have a little bit of shrapnel in my arm and stuff from it, but I didn't care about that. I was just really hoping that my sons were okay. Mm -hmm. And of course, the whole thing was over in under 20 minutes. The gun battle was, I don't know, maybe 10 minutes, but it seems like an eternity, especially when you don't know where your kids are. And what I had thought would be the happiest day of my life was now looking like it was going to be the worst day of my life. But then, another reversal of fortune, and it turned out that this was actually a good day. The kids he protected, like his four-year-old son, are now getting their first taste of a real home, and with them, Boyle finds some comfort.